Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed the two day break since my last video. I definitely did. Went and visited some family, had a short vacation there. But ever since that last video, which I'll show you guys on screen really quick, we did predict the new CSGO case, which did drop 12 hours after that video. Of course, the Spectrum 2 case. I'm sure many of you guys have thought about that. But a quick overall opinion of that case, we had a lot of great new skins added into the game. At the same time though, more importantly, the new official Chinese version of CSGO has been released. And so a great new influx of players has been added into the game and hopefully gonna be boosting the self morale of everyone out there who thought CSGO was dying. And so these next few weeks are gonna be very important for the game itself. But on top of that, a lot of great new skins, kind of a double-edged sword though. My own opinion, when we see great skins added to weapons you never really use, like this one on screen, of course our first sword today, we'll do with this, the PB Bison High Roller, which people did see like anomaly on his, on his tweet on screen. Other YouTubers as well noticed this. The DMCA copyright infringement strike has been placed on that weapon. This always brings up the same kind of rumor out there. Will this be a contraband skin? So first off, I'm gonna deny that. I can say with 95% certainty, you will probably never see a contraband skin enter the game ever again, and here are my reasons why. First of which, we had the original art creator of this has made several other skins on the market. He's actually updated on his post. I'll link it down below for all of you guys as well if you want to check it out. He's actually updated us just yesterday. It is his original artwork. He's kind of re-encouraging us. He's made other artworks out there, and apparently the one who actually placed a strike on this was a complete troll, so he should win that case sometime soon, and this skin should go back into the market the same way it was with probably no changes as well. After the M4A4 HAL went contraband, we've had other skins out there that did actually get DMCA strikes as well. The M4A4 Griffin was one of them. People forget about that. They made that minor change to the Eagle and other skins out there. McSkillet talked about this and the price remained stagnant. It never went, it never really spiked up too high as well. And that skin was never made contraband. So in the future as well, it really would kind of defeat the purpose to have this golden howl. If it was the one contraband skin, it would kind of defeat the rarity of it if all of a sudden Valve decided to make all these skins contraband. And so that's why they're probably trying to fight against it. They only really want one gold skin out there. Of course, in the future, it's definitely possible possible to add maybe one skin in there, but it's very unlikely for a skin to ever go contraband based off this way again. It's kind of a, you know, history does repeat itself, but Valve is definitely defending against that history. Just because another copyright infringement strike does come down on a skin, they're probably going to try any way besides making it contraband to stop that from happening. So it does seem this will never go contraband, guys. I would not invest in this. Of course, there's not been too many open so far. Some did spike in price. I know one of them was actually bought for a ridiculous price. I'll show you guys on screen as well. I would not advise buying it though because it's probably never going to be contraband and we'll likely never see another contraband skin in the game of CSGO. And also while I was gone, we had Team Rogue kind of go full circle. If you guys remember Kadian, actually a very well-known uh, kind of influencer out there in the scene. I say influencer because he's played for so many CSGO teams now as kind of a ringer or a stand-in player from SK Gaming as well as his own team, Team Rogue. Alongside that, we had him stand in for teams like Heroic and do very well, but he's never really been fully timed for or fully signed to a team besides his former Team Rogue. And that was several, several months ago. That team kind of disbanded as players went out all over the place. Of course, Team Rogue then went for a North American lineup, and it now seems they've gone full circle and actually signed Katie into their team. I think a great player when it comes to tournaments out there. Every time he plays a Katowice tournament, Katie does do very well. He's traveled for teams like Heroic and gone very well and qualified for a team like that. Just never been signed. So he will be joining Hiko and the rest of the lineup on screen for all of you. And of course, to no surprise, he'll be replacing their stand-in member, Uber. He was formerly of Complexity and Selfless Gaming, and he was a stand-in player for a few weeks of ESL Pro League. So yes, Katie is now back on Team Rogue, this time though a North American lineup. So kind of a weird change of scenery for him, I'm sure. But on top of that, we also had Soar Gaming, one of those organizations out there, the first COD organization to actually sign a CSGO team many, many months ago. I want to say probably over a year ago as well. Then Red Reserve also coming from COD. They signed a CSGO team as well. That CSGO team with Mike Lilly has since disbanded. But now Soar announced their brand new Mountain Dew League roster on screen for all of you. So congrats to them. It's kind of really cool to see all these Call of Duty organizations kind of branching out as well. We've seen this in the past few months. All these esports organizations really dipping their toes into CSGO. Of course, course, lower tier teams here, but best of luck to the new Soar Gaming roster. And again, this next season of Mountain Dew League, it's going to be an ESCA premier season of Mountain Dew League. It's now officially under that title. We have a lot of great teams in there as well as Steel alongside that Days. Every one of those players has a team in Mountain Dew League. It's going to make for a great watch and a great viewing experience besides ESL Pro League. A lot of lower tier teams, but a lot of great players in that league this year. And with not very much news out there for this episode, I'll be back in a couple days with a more full episode out. There were some scams, other inside information. I do want to show you guys how Chinese CSGO is looking. First off, Chinese CSGO as well as on Chinese Steam level what they're looking like with the overlays. I'll show you guys some screenshots on screen thanks to NIP. Other sources out there. As of right now, Perfect World doing a great job. We have yet to have any numbers out there in terms of players or new members. I'll try and find that stuff out. And anyone out there who actually knows those details, knows those numbers for me, please contact me via Twitter so I can share with all of you guys who are currently watching. As of right now, Perfect World has been doing great things and of course Chinese Pro League is coming sometime soon with a lot of other updates many of you guys know about. So with this episode being kind of short, I want to share with all of you guys something that might be 
not too safe. If you guys are watching right now, some friends or family in the room, I would probably advise you to click away or maybe watch this later on your own. That kind of sounds weird to say, but this is actually post on the Reddit kind of went viral. This is fake news. It's not actually a post made by Perfect World themselves, but someone out there actually photoshopped all the CSGO skins onto, onto scantily dressed women. And nothing is actually shown, but I'll show you guys some of those screenshots on screen as well. It gave me a good laugh. I was actually in the car with my parents. I saw it. I saw the NSFW on Reddit. You guys know that means not safe for work. Well, it's also not safe for anything with your parents involved because I my, my dad was over my shoulder and I was just, yeah, it was bad. Anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. Thank you all for watching. Also, one last special thing. I actually, in the mail, I got these, uh, these are actually wax strips. So let's start doing some interaction with all of you guys who watch my live streams. I live stream about once to twice every single weekend. Uh, this past weekend I was on vacation, but these are wax strips. So if this video breaks 800 likes, I will wax my thighs on live stream and yeah, maybe that maybe you guys don't even want me to do that. But anyway, hope you guys all enjoy. Thank you all for watching. If you guys do want me to wax my thighs, which is probably a really stupid request, make sure to leave a like as well as leave a comment down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I'll see you guys on a couple days. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you, and I'll see you guys all next time.